So you've just had an iDig 2D system installed onto your excavator and perhaps you're wondering about how it all works. Well, you've come to the right place. Stick around as we're doing a deep dive into the world's best 2D system for any excavator, the iDig Touch. G'day, Troy here from Position Partners, the distributor for iDig in Australia, New Zealand and Southeast Asia. This video is the first in a series where we'll be going through the features and functions of the iDig that an operator will be using on a day-to-day -day basis. In this video in particular, we're going to be having a look at the sensors and some of the hardware, the layout and functions of the icons on the main screen, as well as a look into the system settings. Make sure you subscribe as there'll be plenty of more content coming along after this video, including videos from out in the field, related construction technology, and of course, more videos in this series. If you haven't done so already, check out the other videos that we've done on the iDig. The overview and installation video will give you a great idea of how it all works and goes together on your machine. The links are in the description below. And if you've got any feedback or questions or anything that you want me to cover specifically, let me know in the comments below. It'd be great to hear from you. Okay, with that all out of the way, let's jump in and have a look at the iDig 2D Touch. Once the system has been installed onto your excavator, this small case is all that you'll need to be carrying around with you. Inside it are all the vital components to your iDig system. The screen, the light bar, and of course the wireless sensors. Just a quick word about the wireless sensors. It's best practice to take them off the machine at the end of every day, as when they're still attached to their plates, they're always on. So to maximize the battery health, just unclick them from their plates and pop them in the bag at the end of the day. Don't worry if you forget and leave them on the machine for a few days, as there's plenty of capacity in the batteries to last that long. However, you might want to just check the battery health and then leave them out in the sun over the weekend to fully recharge. Once the system has booted up and you have selected your machine, you'll come straight here into the main work screen. The main work screen is split in two, showing the bucket in two profiles. Along the bottom are the icons for the digging functions and at the top is the distance to benchmark measurement along with the name of the currently selected bucket. Notice the question marks on the screen and the LED display is flashing. This simply means that a benchmark has not yet been set. Looking again at the bottom icons, you have the laser catch, slope selection and reference selection. I'll talk about the laser catch and setting and changing benchmarks in part two and then in part three, we'll cover the slope selection and digging to grade. I'll go ahead and set a benchmark using the current bucket position set to zero. So now on screen in place of the question marks, we now have a number and the LED display is giving us a height indication. There are also now a couple of additional new icons along the bottom. These new icons are for adding an offset to the current benchmark and the quick reference, which is the last measurement you set as a benchmark. You now have a live measurement of the distance between your benchmark and the cutting edge of the bucket. As the machine moves, the numbers will change from green to red, depending on if you're above or below the benchmark. The LED display will show orange lights if you're above and red if below your set benchmark and green when you are at zero. Notice the arrows and lines under the edge of the bucket. This shows the point from where the iDig is measuring the distance to the benchmark. As the bucket or machine changes position and or angle, the iDig will automatically change this point to the part of the bucket that is closest to the ground. You can lock the point where the measurement is taken from to the center or either corner of the bucket by touching the relevant spot on the cutting edge. Touching the top edge of either bucket profile will show a reading on how level the bucket is. On the left, looking at the bucket from the cab, you have the level from left to right, and looking from the side, you can see the level from front to back. Handy for digging when you can't see the bucket edge. And down in the bottom right hand corner, we have the icon for the system settings. I'll touch on those a little later. Tapping anywhere on the screen brings out additional icons. Up in the top right, we have the bucket selection menu and the sensor dashboard. The bucket selection menu is where you will come to change to the appropriate bucket calibration to match the attachment on your excavator. This includes auger drills. Highlight the bucket you want to use and press select. The sensor dashboard gives you an overview of the information coming out of the sensors attached to your system. 
it's a useful tool to quickly check the charge level of the battery in each sensor. As you can see here, my boom sensor could do with a little sunlight. Over on the left hand side are the icons for the tape measure, hide alarm and the two additional functions of digging to reach and width. Check out part 2 and 3 where I'll discuss these in more detail, but for now here's a quick look. The tape measure function allows you to measure between two points. Set a point by pressing the box and resetting the numbers to zero. The iDig will then show the horizontal, vertical and segment distances and angle of the slope as you move the booms and bucket. The hide alarm sets an alert based on where you position the boom and dipper. Depending on your settings, you will get a loud audible alarm and the light bar and screen will flash when you've reached that set high point. The reach and width digging functions add another dimension when you are digging. Adding reach allows you to set a distance that you want to dig to or from. Width utilizes the 2D sensor to judge the slew motion so you can dig a section to a set width. These will be covered in more detail in a later video. On to the settings menus. There are three settings, basic, system and work settings. Basic settings contains options for adjusting volume, screen brightness and the screen's sleep timer. Under the units, you can change the angle and measurement units that are displayed on screen. Choose one that suits your preference. Sensor check is a detailed view of what's happening with the sensors. On the left are your current sensors, each with a blue bar for battery health. Next, there is a section for the combo sensor. This allows you to check if the laser receiver is detecting a laser. And lastly on the right, a section for the 2D sensor and if installed, information on a rotating hitch. Radio check shows you the current signal strength of each sensor. When the iDig is turned on, it randomly selects a channel from 80 different frequencies. If you're having some radio connection issues, changing to a new frequency can often resolve this in the unlikely case it should occur. Restrictive mode allows you to set a code to protect the calibration settings. Useful if a machine is operated by a number of different people. 2D mode has two options, basic and advanced. This is to do with how alignments are set when you are using slope selection or digging to width. Having this set on basic simplifies the alignment process. Advanced mode gives you a few more options for alignment. On to the system settings. Calibration data is kept here, so be careful not to change anything. However, if you need to add a new bucket, calibrate a tilt hitch, or even add and calibrate a new machine, this is the place to come. In the machine parameters section, you will find all the measurements and calibration data for your machine. Machine data can be saved onto a USB stick so it can be safely stored away or transferred onto another iDIG system. I'll show you how to do this process as well as update the firmware on the iDIG in another video. And finally, we have work settings. In this section, you will find all the settings to adjust your light bar and to customize your audible alarms. For the LED display, you can set a resolution for what each LED represents, down to a minimum of one centimeter. For fine trimming, I'd suggest two centimeters, and for larger cuts or bulking out, six to 10 centimeters per LED should suffice. Be aware that the resolution of each LED is tied directly to the deadband setting. The deadband setting prevents excessive flickering of the display when on grade and means the LED won't change until the distance passes above or below this set number. Depending on the ground you are working with, for example, hard rocky ground where the cutting edge is jerking up and down, you might find that the LED display is jumping all over the place. Use the time filtering function to slow the LEDs down if they're changing too fast. Again, find a setting that works for you. Next, we have the audible alarms. Any button that is dark is currently active. Muting the system entirely means you'll be missing out on some important alerts, such as having a missing sensor and when you're using the height alarm. I suggest muting each of the five zones in the depth alarm and then having the elevation and missing sensor alarms turned on. Finally, there is the underwater mode. As radio signals don't travel very well underwater, this mode enables your excavator to dig underwater and still maintain some accuracy. By activating a mode, the iDig disregards the information coming from the bucket sensor. The iDig will either remember the last position the bucket was set or give you a reading where the maximum reach of your attachment would normally be. Alrighty then, that wraps up part one of this series. Come and check out part two where I'll be discussing how to set and change benchmarks using the laser catch function and a bit more of a look at the tape measure and height alarm functions. Part three will cover slope selection where you'll be digging to grades and I'll talk about the reach and digging to width functions. Remember if you've got any questions or feedback please leave a comment below it'll be great to hear from you. Thanks for watching I'll catch you in the next video.